Greetings and welcome to Factorio. I'm D Gray, and today we continue our entry level 2 mega base, where we in the last episode just got our smelting arrays up and running. In today's episode, we will start to build our main bus, as that is uh, something that will allow us to expand out quite well. If you do enjoy this series, do remember to like the video, comment, and uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Will help me out a lot and uh, will let me know that I should make more of this series. So, uh, without out of the way, let's talk a bit about a main bus for the ones of you that don't know what it is. A main bus is pretty much a system that allows you to take resources in from one side, traveling down in some straight, organized lines, and then splitting off resources wherever it's needed for whatever production you want to do. To do a main bus, you can do a one-sided one. I did that in my 0 0.18 series um, about a year ago. And um, I think as a cool new thing in this one, I want to do a two-sided one. To show how to set one up, we'll do it for example right here. A main bus normally consists of doing four builds in the start. The reason for that is then you can jump things between them. As we talked about last episode, one built, one yellow underground build can jump four. That means you can hook in four new below. This pattern can continue, making taking resources from the top, for example the production area up here, down to underlying lines a lot easier to do. When doing a two-sided one, it's, uh, it's very important to think about uh, how many lanes you might need further down the line and the things have to go back and forth. One way to get around that is, uh, is hooking up the tin lines you want, or at least planning out the tin lines you want at the start of the game. For example, right here, if we go with tin lines, now it's 11 lines, if we go with tin lines, we'll be able to uh, fit in 40 uh, belts. That should be more than enough for what we need to get to a rocket launch before we transition into um, a, a train mega base. The reason for 40 is that we'll use iron here, we'll then use copper, we'll use some for green circuits, steel, coal, stone, stone bricks and so forth. Red and green circuits and blue chips when we get to it and that should all be able to fit on the main bus. I think 40 will be enough for what we need to do, so uh, so let's get on with that. Another good, good thing to do at the start of a main bus is put in a balancer. The reason for that is if we do four lines just going into each of these, then if we have spare production on the bottom one that has room for capacity on the top one, they can't split to each other. But by putting in a balancer, you'll enable yourself to do it. A balancer is somewhat easy to build. You see right here? I'll just build and show you. Here, here, here and here. It all fits inside the four. What we're building is a four lane balancer. I'll just build it first and then explain how it works afterwards. So as I said, it will balance out the four lanes, making sure things go on each side. So right now, if you hook up this iron and get it in, it will output on the top line, going to the bottom line and the top one, but also input into the middle one. That will output to the top line and bottom line, output here, go to the top line and the bottom line, making sure this resource go on every single one of, uh, of the lines and splitting it out. For example, let's drag this out so you can see it in action. If I now hook up our first line, being our iron line, you'll see that it will start to balance out the resources going on both sides, or pretty much on every side here. As you can see, it splits down, it gets out on every single one, completely balanced, and uh, be used wherever we need, and having the maximum amount of throughput on every line. Never jamming. That's filling up very, very well and uh, splitting out as needed. This is pretty much a design we will save 
as we talked about earlier, you can make blueprints, Alt B, for example. Then you can pretty much just mark it, save it, and put it on the hotbar. It's also here in the inventory, so in the future, for example, this is the iron line. I want to do the same for the copper line. I can just place it down, and it's a lot easier to see where things have to go, making it a lot faster to build. For example, right there, getting in the lines. Just like that. And then we can also get in the copper line. And this is pretty much the power of the main boss that you're able to do things like this and always have the resources you need at the production sites. So at this point, we will have, uh, like I said, copper and iron. Let's just drag this out a bit. There we go. This will also balance out having a nice thing here to draw from. So, one of the first things we want to hook up. We have some room here, so um, we could do it at the top. I could also want to show you it at the bottom to see how it looks when things travel across the 10 line one, having it built on both sides. So uh, why don't we try and build our first thing on the main bus that is needed for the first thing we want to automate being the science production. So we could hook up red right now. It would be very wise to do. But we also want to hook up green and green requires electronic circuits. So one of the first things I always start with is automatic electronic circuits as that is one of the most important things to get going. And one of the things that requires the most of resource as an input. So if we see here, this one requires iron gears and copper or iron and uh, copper. To choose what you want on the main bus, it's always good to think about the compression. For example, this requires one iron gear, one iron gear requires two iron. So in theory, you could just make this and send it down the line. But what I normally do is I just make the, uh, the gear wheels on site as that is uh, a bit easier just having iron flowing. So if we see here, if you want to have a bit of room before we go in, for example, if you want to have a space of four, one, two, just mark with it two, three, four, then we'll start to build a production around here. The reason for that is so we can have a bit of uh, organized space here where it allows us to do uh, what we want. Go three, four. And then we'll start to build about down here. That'll be uh, the start point of our machines. So to do a green circuit setup that starts about here, maybe let's just say about here, that will have resources going in from up top, down this way, and being used. So firstly, if you look at the recipe, three copper wire, one iron plate. This produces two every half a second. This requires three every half a, sec half a second. So if we do two of these machines, we require six every half a second. And if you do three of these, we'll produce six every half a second. So the build and on the do is this. We'll have copper cables here at the back. If you hold down shift right click, you can copy paste. And at the front, we'll have electronic circuits outputting onto a belt. That is the normal setup I do, and it works very, very nicely. For example, this will output somewhere out here. For example, right here, going this way. Having them go in with the power of, um, of splitters. So if we do something like, I think here will be good. Put and merge him here at the middle to get it on both sides. Output it here and here. And then dragging it into the belts. Doing the same up here for both sides. Let's see if we do this, you'll fit in nicely there. 
And the reason why I'm doing this is I want one on the opposite side that's mirror of uh, is a mirror of this one. The reason why I'm leaving a bit of room here is that, as you can see, these also require requires iron plates. Iron plate will jump in right here. But in theory, do it like this, I think. And then you'll jump from here again onto the next one to make it uh, somewhat uh, modular. We can then just drag some belts in between, making it look good. And that looks uh, very nice. Could also do it right here. It's a bit of a waste of resources, but it looks a bit better. At least I think this looks just a smidge better than uh, the other setup. So if we do this, we now have double inputs. Here we'll grab, um, what's it called? The iron in, we'll get the copper wire from the back. And to do that, I'll just go and I will craft a few. Use these just for the added throughput. Ooh, did I misalign this a bit? That should be fine. One, two, one, two. As you can see, these will go in here. These two will go into that one. We can add in a bit of power in the middle to power of that. Add some power down here on both sides to power these outputs and the inputs. And then here on the back side, we can power all of our uh, inserts going in. So this is pretty much the one-sided build at the moment, where we want to uh, to hook things up. Might want to move it down a bit, since it did take a bit more room up here, but uh, it, it might be fine. It won't be the end of the world uh, that we have it like this. And still get onto the bus where we want it to. But as we can see, it goes in. So let's try and grab the things we need. Firstly, we want to get copper on this line. So to do that, we pretty much just drag it. Jumps all the way down. Goes to about there, goes out. This is pretty much a building area for uh, the transition. And that allows us to uh, to continue up. Um, do you want to move it down a bit so it's actually below this one, the outputs? just to make it look good. An easy way to do it, if you had robots, is just a copy like this and move it. And for example, I want the output to be, let's say right here instead. So now I can dismantle this. All the blueprints will be below, just holding right click, picking up the things, and it is saving everything we need to know for the build again. Because in the start, it's a good idea to set it up correctly the first time, as it will annoy you, or at least it will annoy me, if I get to, to do it correctly. So, that looks good. We can have the inserters, each of these. We can have that. We can have things jump in. We'll have iron jump in here. We can have, uh, what's it called, green circles jump out from these two. So, let's just hook these up. That looks good. You can go here. Let's see if we can get this setup done. There we are. You can go in. Might need to be upgraded to fast inserters just to make sure it actually moves the products uh, fast enough. Power, and then we'll need double power up here. Kind of want to do it here and here, as I hope we'll be able to connect them up when going down. As you can see, if we have this, take that, it will now fit in very nicely here and uh, keep the process going further down the line, making it modular and easier to expand. That's exactly what I want to see. So let's get into resources. We also need to get the power in that we can drag 
in theory, right here on the boss if we wanted to. Let's just do it for now, just like this. Might have to move it at some point, but it, it should work for now. We can go to... I think here we'll be fine. Oh, well, well, we'll move it a bit. Go out here instead. And up and connect up to our little power line here. As you can see, we almost have power on there now. And now we need to split out the resources we need below. A good way to do it, to split it off, is for example, if you want things to continue on down the line and just want to get one off, you can do something like this. The reason that is, then you can go in here and filter it up right to the right, meaning that it will always take all it can, throw it in here, before sending anything down the line. That way we can connect it up and things will just flow. Then we need to do the same for the iron. The iron is right here. Let's get some of these trees away. So it's easy to work with. And in theory you can take this blueprint if you want to. To help you line it up. For example right there. Going all the way up to the iron line. Jump that. Drag this across, set up the same kind of build as we did over here. So there, 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 and there. And control left click the settings. So now we have copper flowing, we have iron flowing. They are taking from our setup that we can always expand out in case we need more. And we'll just continue down this way, getting it in. That will start to produce green circuits that we need going forward. Just quite a bit of power connection. There and here. Here's a bit of power for you and a bit of power for you. So as you, now these are producing. They will start to input into this as soon as we have the iron. There we go. And there we go. An automated green circuit production that can supply our base with a great amount of circuits. So let's just build the same on this side. We will need to get this in again to here. You'll jump that way. Line up below with the next thing. And now that we have this, we can hook up the two things we need. Will be there, here and here. It's you and you. Oh, we have green circuits we need to craft. Thank God we just made some. Let's see, we'll get one, two, one, two. We'll get two in. We'll get these hooked up as well. We'll copy paste the settings from these and then get an iron line flowing as well from the main bus go here down the easy way to match it is if you just take this part theory that thing and line it up in the same way so right here then you can take this part and line that up over here where it looks the same. Don't know how I managed to. That is correct. I just misaligned the one over here. As you can see, that's why it's good to measure things out because I did misalign it a bit. Copy that and line it up here. Measure twice, build once. <laughs> Always very important. So now this will line up. Then we just need to hook this up. We need to hook the same up for... Um, right here. You'll go from here. You'll line up to that one. And as you can see, this is quite powerful because... Then we can just kind of hook things up this way.
we can then get in all of this. And that can start to go down towards uh, the base. Same up here. One, two, four. Get this one on. I have the same kind of output. Then just drag it. Right now, I'll just go back up top and pick up the things we need, as we do have production going up here that can, uh, that's making a lot of it. So let's grab 50 of you. Let's grab all of that. Taking the green circuits, throwing them in here to craft more, together with a few other things that we need to get going. Underground was what we needed. We need a few splitters as well. Here's more green circuits for you as well to keep you going. And some belts just to have it nicely. So there we are. This is, uh, is doing what it needs to. As you can see, right now it's getting quite tedious to do all of this production. So oh, moving this around. But that is things we will change very, very soon. For now, we'll just get the things up and running, producing what we need. Let's get some of you, you and you. There we are. So let's continue down. We can run the belt to get a bit more speed. A nice little handy trick. And now we need to have spots as well for the output of, uh, of green circuits very, very soon. Let's just drag you to the end. There goes the blue circuits. Oh, not the blue circuits, but um, the iron plates. Let's drag the copper as well. There we are. And with a bit of you going in. Then took up the power. One, two. The exact same way as before. There, there, and there. Then we need to fix the outputs. Go in. Go that way. Blue, blue. And that is a pretty well thought out design for uh, for green circuits. As you can see, we're producing a lot now. We are getting both sides running and just uh, shocking along with this. So now we just need to get it back to the main bus. That is luckily very easy to do. If we have enough undergrounds for it. Because that is one of the issues by doing this is that it does require quite a few. But we want the green to be right here. So in theory, we'll do one, two lines. And we'll have the other one going this way, hooking up. As you can see now, now we have green circuits, we have iron and copper, and that is the building blocks for a lot of things we have to get going in the future. Let's just drag in some more of you just to get things going. There we are. Two lines of green circuits. Of course, we haven't expanded it out to uh, produce enough as uh, this will be fine for now. So that is pretty much the design behind the main boss build. Um, I think this will be a decent place to end this episode. Uh, we got our green circuit production done. We got the main boss started. That means that from the next episode, we can start to hook up both our sciences as that is the next thing I want to do. And then in the episode after that, I think this one will do it. We'll start to hook up our main, uh, what's called uh, a mall. A mall is pretty much a building or a setup where you have all the things being crafted, all the building things for whatever you want to do further down the line. So um, if you did enjoy this, do remember to like the video. It will mean a lot to me and uh, it'll let me know that you want me to make more.
If you're new to the channel, do remember to like as well. And uh, look forward to tomorrow when we'll continue our endeavors in entry level to megabase with our new science setup. So um, thank you so much for watching, guys. I've been Tigre, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.